After 15 years of coding, working on big and smaller projects throughout my career, I've been perfecting the way I plan my web development projects. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over what my current process is and how it actually helps me finish the project. And if you stick by the end, I'll share a template that's going to help you kickstart your next project. My requirements for organizing the project are, I want to be able to add tickets very easily from my phone as well and organize them by feature. I want to track tickets on a Kanban board so I can visualize where all of my features are. I want to have preset templates for the tickets so I can easily populate them. And this is optional depending on the project, but for most projects it's an overkill. But I would like sprints and roadmaps sometimes. I've been engaging with the Twitter building public community lately and I've got to be honest, those MRR screenshots are getting to me. So I've decided once again to embark on the treacherous journey of solving a problem that I have in hopes that someone else have it and maybe soon being able to post my own screenshots of my MRR on Twitter. And with the organizational template that I'm going to be showing in this video, I'm more confident I'm actually going to finish the project this time. So I've jumped on the Notion trend a couple of years ago when I was planning out my old YouTube videos. And at first I realized it's very powerful, it can do a lot of different stuff and even with the free version as well. But at times it can be overwhelming and it requires a lot of setup. And then I realized you can get a template from someone else and use it as your own. So that's what I've done for most of it. I still use templates for my YouTube videos and I still use Notion to plan them. So in the past couple of weeks, I've been working on my own side projects template that's going to help me organize my side projects and satisfy all the requirements I have. A couple of months ago, I started counting my calories in order to lose weight. And that's been going great, but I found myself doing this across three different apps. I've been using Microfactor to count my calories, I've been using Todoist for my shopping list, and I've been using Google Sheet to actually represent each day of the week in a table and all the meals I'm going to be having that day. And because none of these are integrated with each other, this process is kind of slow and painful, as you can imagine. But after a couple of painful months, I've decided to build something of my own, which should be pretty simple and actually solve this problem for me. So in short, my idea is to build a web app where I can create meals, have all the ingredients inside and I can tweak them for each day of the week. And at the beginning of the week or whenever I can extract a list of shopping ingredients for that week and it's gonna combine the ingredients. For example, if I have chicken on Monday and on Wednesday, it's gonna combine the amounts and just give me one amount of how much chicken do I need. And I would like the shopping list to actually be a checkbox list so I can tick off things as I go through them and buy them. So let's dive into the Notion project and actually show you how this is going to look. So I have the project here. This is the landing kind of page where you can see all the stuff. And this is a short description of the template. Here we have the quick actions. And this, this was the first requirement I had was to be able to add new tasks easily or add a new bug very easily. And these all are going to use two different templates for the bug and for the task essentially. And we can add feature and sprints here as well. Then we have quick links here, which is going to take us to the backlog, the sprint planning, the roadmap and all tasks. And like I said, sprints and roadmaps are a bit overkill for small projects, but I'm going to leave these in the template so you can delete them if you want to. And then down here we have the Kanban view of the sprint. This can be easily done with all the tasks as well, or you can just have one sprint and not complete the sprint or something like that. But I have three different starting tasks here, basically, to set up the repo, or organize the data structure of my project and think about the architecture and plan out the architecture of the project. We can dive a lot deeper in here. So this is the backlog. We can see all the different tasks here. We have sprint planning view and we can plan the different sprints. We can see the current sprint again in a short, in a, its own window. Let's go back. I like the roadmap. This shows like if you, if you have different features, you can plan out, okay, I'm going to be working on this feature on in these dates. And then I want to start a new feature. And then I want to start on the next feature and you can connect all of them and kind of see the, the roadmap of your project. And then you can see all your tasks as well. Like I said, there's a lot of different views on this project because each of these, the feature, the sprint and the tasks are basically their own pages and they all have different views and they all are connected to work together. So I can move the 
if I'm working on the architecture ticket, I'm gonna move it in progress. I can put it in blocked or whatever. And I can add different columns here as well if I want to. If I'm working with someone else on the project, I can filter by a signee, by a feature. I really like this project. These are basically features from Notion, but I've put them in one place and kind of made them work for myself to satisfy all the requirements I have for playing out a project. I usually come up with ideas for new tickets or comments about tickets and stuff like that during random hours and I always have my phone with me so because that notion has an app for the phone I can just add new tasks or add a bug or whatever and notion is very powerful when it comes to writing stuff out there's a lot of different elements you can add I mean if you haven't used notion I would highly recommend it for anything you need to, to organize but you can add to-do lists, you can add big headings and bullet lists and toggle lists and all the different kinds of stuff. And you can describe your tasks very friendly. And also you can connect it to GitHub pull requests as well. And you can track those as well. Even though I'm going to be working on my own on this project, I, I don't think I'm going to be using pull requests. But anyways, it's a good feature to have. Also lately, Notion added AI. So... Let me find all the tickets I added now. So you can see some AI tools in here and you have like free usage. If you're using the free plan, I think you can do like five or 10 a day and then you have to use um, to, to move to the paid version. You, you can do a lot of different stuff with AI. You can summarize, you can explain stuff, you can improve the writing. I, I usually use this when I'm scripting out my videos to improve my, my scripts or make, make it more funny, or like change the tone to friendly and stuff like that. And this is very fun, but I use the free version of Notion and I usually run out of the tokens for day or whatever they track it with. Yeah, so that's the template. It's pretty simple for me. I'm still debating if I should use sprints or, or roadmap, but I'm gonna keep them in there. And if they get too overwhelming to track, I'm just gonna delete them in the future. And I do want to say that I think the best, the best possible way I think you can improve your coding is to just code. And I'm sure you heard this, you've probably seen the tweets around this as well. But it's true, practice makes perfect. Like I know it's a cliche, but it will improve your coding skills. And that's no way, there's no way around it. You actually need those hours put into it and, and experimenting and trying different things to, to understand how stuff works and how you can improve your skills. Coding stuff will help you progress your skills 10 times more than just watching tutorials. This is just the first video of the series that I'm going to be doing around this project. The next ones are going to be architecture and data structures and text tags and how I'm going to be designing all of those. So make sure to subscribe to not miss any of those. And that's been it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any feedback, put it down in the comments. I go through all the comments on all my videos. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy coding. Bye.